Hey, 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 it is coffee time. time. Good morning, everybody. It is Sunday, October 29th. 2017 here on the Rancho, and we are always so happy to be choochooing with you on a Sunday morning because we really don't, you know, it's a chance to cover off one or a few. Jen, stop preening for the camera here. It's a chance to cover off one or a few topics here on uh, on YouTube, and this morning, Missy Jen, hello. We broadcast oh. <laughs> this morning. You know, we thought we would talk about what a strange kind of Halloween it is in town. In my whole lifetime, which has spanned oh. quite a few years, and uh, Jan, you grew up in Germany where maybe Halloween wasn't a big kind of... So Halloween was celebrated in February. Yeah, in Germany. So we didn't... You know, Jen doesn't have the experience of late October with the pumpkins <clears throat> and all that craziness. It was Not really an Irish-English tradition of Halloween came out of Ireland. They didn't celebrate Walburgus night. You know, it was the uh, day before uh, All Souls Day, All Saints Day, we call it now, where the spirits were supposed to be roaming the earth and all that. But there's not much spirit here. Mm. And I grew up in the U.S. where Halloween has gotten progressively bigger every year now. It was, it seems a lot bigger when you're a kid because you're getting trick-or-treat candy, you're out, you're out filling up your candy bowl, your bags, it's just, it was a big thing. You're playing tricks on people, you're soaping windows, you're doing all kinds of crazy, crazy kind of uh, stuff. But you get older, but you still, you still enjoy the experience of it really, Halloween is the day that kind of brings in the holiday season of fall. You know, you have Halloween and then you have Thanksgiving and then you go into Christmas time and then it's New Year. So it's really like the kickoff of that time of year, right? That fourth quarter, that holiday. I started celebrating Halloween when I moved to California, so. To yeah. me, it's all still a new shoe. Now, of course, I had a couple. I had a I have a couple daughters, and when they were growing up, Halloween was a big thing, and we did uh, dress up, and we would carve pumpkins and do all those kind of fun things. So it's kind of strange this year, with Halloween being such a big part of my life for so many years, Missy Jane. It's strange when you go around a city of the size of Santa Rosa, which is really the size of Salt Lake City, Utah. I mean, we're talking about a major, major city here. And you really see no evidence of Halloween at all. And uh, some people would say, well, the wildfires only really consumed 5% of the city's housing stock. But it was what I really call kind of most part blue chip housing <laughs> stock up on the hills. The people that the people that were renowned for decorating, renowned for having trick-or-treaters through the neighborhood, renowned for having parties for kids on Halloween that couldn't afford to have candy and couldn't afford to go out and, you know, the parents didn't have money, didn't want to spend money on candy, so they would pay for community Halloween parties and things at after-school centers, boys and girls clubs, they would always, they'd be the ones that would kick the money in <clears throat> to make that kind of thing happy, uh, happen. So I have to admit myself this year, Missy Jen, it was uh, with kind of a heavy heart that I started hanging up decorations here on uh, Halloween. And it's weird to see everywhere you drive, you really don't see any we have really probably the only place in our neighborhood that I've seen decorated for, for Halloween at all. We have people living across the street in the apartment house that are getting Red Cross, you don't want to call them rations, but deliveries of food. And They're getting the food day. and some of them getting yeah. uh, clothing and bags and stuff. And, uh, and so it's, it's strange. <laughs> you know, it's almost on a daily basis. You know, I wasn't in Germany after World War II. But I'm sure, Jan, your father told you some of the horror stories of trying my to father, survive. My father, they, they left during the war, but I had a dear friend that 
was during the war in Cologne and uh, was shipped off to Russia, walked back from Russia all the way back to home, to Cologne, <clears throat> found everything in rubbles yeah, and had to start over again from nothing. So, you know, that whole experience so, in Germany, that post-war experience in Belgium and Germany of, of basically coming home to square miles of just rubble and city right. after city after city. So, it's kind of the way, I think that kind of a gloom hangs over the city here, Jen, where you just kind of find yourself wondering, where do we begin now to even think about that rebuilding and stuff? And it's a daunting task when people don't immediately feel like partying and having Oktoberfest right. and Christmas and you know they're worried about where their next meal is coming from <clears> where <throat> their shelter is going to be so I guess I'm starting this vlog off this morning by just talking about it's a really weird Halloween this kind of uh, year and you get that initial snapback rah rah well everything will be great we're santa rosens we're sonoma countyans everything is, you get that initial rah rah and then reality kind that, of that sits. wears off after two weeks yeah, wears you know. off after two weeks and you <laughs> people think, realize it's do you not... even want to live here do you want to live on hills uh, you remember that you probably don't know there were two you know in 54 years those hills have burned two times up there so you right. really want to put people back up there a third time so there's a lot of hard decisions jen and i have contemplated a few times and i've mentioned to jen maybe it's time to <coughs> move on to uh, a different place maybe it's time to move to san diego and uh, and and go down there or do we do we stay here and you know we have to ponder our our future too so that's the first thing of uh, today just noticing how different um, Halloween season is here and I think they also had an article about the pumpkin patches are just vacant I mean there's nobody at the you know. yeah I think we should go maybe to the pumpkin patch and get a few pumpkins. And get a few things. I mean, the mm -hmm. pumpkins, pumpkin mm -hmm. patch over support. across Highway 101, they were closed mm -hmm. until about a week ago. They couldn't get access, them a little bit in access in there. So it's kind of going to be, uh, it's going to no. be, it's just, like I said, it's just a strange <laughs> kind of Halloween. And you wonder what, uh, what Thanksgiving is going to be like for us we have las vegas coming up in the um, the bottom of youtube number three in las vegas will be occurring the 14th of december through the 17th a little later this year so it'd be good anybody that wants to come down and uh, hang out down there it's a great time of year everything's all decorated for christmas and we always enjoy i know mr john does going to places like the bellagio conservatory and looking at all the uh, really nice <coughs> uh, christmas decorations yeah. so we'll have a good time it's going to be a low key it's going to be a focus for me on a lot of uh, cinematography and things more of uh, visual things this time but we'll have a very good time uh, down there so yeah that's uh, that's going to be coming up in December, and then of course we have the uh, Thanksgiving season coming up. So some people have asked, why aren't you guys doing more videos about uh, what's going on uh, post fire? A lot of people are following that very intensely and closely. One of the reasons is we're in this, we're starting this intensive. You know, we've had you have two waves of cleanup. The first wave you have people dressed in EPA spacesuits that are gone, you know, the white hazmat suits gone through every property, poking around with sensors and things, making sure that there's nothing really dangerous in there. And then once that phase is done, and nobody can get in during that time into these neighborhoods <clears throat> and stuff. And then part two is the general, you know, roll off dumpsters come and then the bobcats start picking up what's left of people's houses and throwing them in. Right, and people, the owners or renters, whoever lived there is there. <clears throat> and a lot of them don't want anybody coming around, snooping around. I've seen already a lot of, when you go onto the local newspaper, 
There are a lot of pictures where people actually posted signs. Oh, this is a hazardous area. Don't come here. Stay away. Or they just post the period. Don't come here. We have got arms. We're armed. Don't come here. People don't want tourism here. And it's, that's really the last thing that they need there. They are grieving of losing everything. And now they are trying to get from like grieving into like possibly re re rebuilding maybe. And they, the last thing they need is strangers to, to you know, walk around and with yeah. cameras in their faces and their grills and whatever. And, and uh, it's just inappropriate, I think. Yeah, and it's just weird. I mean, if you go across the on the other side of Highway 101, which cuts through the town north, cuts through the city in a north south way, if you go over to the uh, street, the old Redwood Highway, that was really the principal traffic north and south before Highway 101 was built. Uh, I've even taken Jen mm -hmm. over there because it is literally, and this is where the fire came over the hill from Napa County, it is literally, you see, if you point the camera at the right side, it is mile after mile after mile of devastation. You go up there, still uh, telephone lines down, cable lines on them. This is a major road, so you can imagine up on the highway. But the weird thing is they have those signs posted every 200 feet along the road. You're entering a hazardous zone, enter at your own risk. Right. So in case you get electrocuted or something like <laughs> that, you can't blame anybody else for, uh, for so going to So it's just area. not safe to go in there. Yeah, so I imagine when things, when a lot of that rubble starts to get cleared away and things, uh, let people have their time, right. pull back the cameras and be respectful. And that's kind of the phase that we're in now. And of course, I'll be attending some meetings and some public forums and some other things because there's going to be a lot of heaven and all on that what's going to be allowed to rebuild and do we build on the hills again and, and just bide our time till the third fire comes sweeping over and wipes everything <clears throat> out or do we we just commit everything to the lowlands then yeah. it's going to be a very interesting kind of process anyway guys coffee time we are on the rancho yeah. we are fine here we are decorated for our uh, halloween as you can see behind us and on the ranch. So, so we bid you a very happy Sunday morning. We're going to go inside and do another dollar store product test for breakfast today. And we hope that you join us. Keep mugging for that camera, Missy Jan. All right, everybody, have a wonderful Sunday today. <laughs> and thanks for being with us for another coffee time. Mm. Yeah.